It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to cover a really nice little utility called KSNP. Now I've shown you Flameshot in the past for getting screenshots but KSNP is another really great screenshotting tool that's out there and available and it's cross-platform. It works on Mac, it works on Windows, it works on Linux. Really helps you get those screenshots very quickly and as you can see from their little uh, demo screenshot here you've got arrows and circles and rectangles and different things you can write and you can type and you can do all kinds of stuff put little emojis and really mark up your screenshots to help people understand. Now the reason that screenshots are such an important part of the internet world is that things can be complicated, things can be confusing, the workflow might be a little bit confusing, and you're wanting to show somebody how to do something. You're wanting to mark something important on the screen so that somebody can see like, hey, here's the error message, or here's the place where something doesn't look quite right in the software that you might want to fix. So having a good screenshot tool for that is really important. And that's something that I'm always looking for. Flameshot is a really, really great tool, and they're working on their Wayland support as far as I know. KSNP is another one that's a great tool. Um, also working on their Wayland support from what I can tell from the issues that are listed on GitHub. So it's really just an amazing tool that I wanted to cover the capabilities of it and show you what it can do. Now before we get into the video I want to say thank you so much to my patrons over at Patreon. I cannot tell you guys how much it means to me that you want to support my content every month. It really just means the world that you want to do that. I truly appreciate it. If you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, one of the, one of the benefits you get is you get ad-free videos. I upload my videos directly to Patreon, so there's no Google or YouTube ads put into those videos, which I think gives you a better experience for sure. Um, on YouTube, there are some ads. You'll see those ads. I don't control those ads, so uh, you know that's just part of having a YouTube account and watching YouTube videos. But if you want to see the ad-free versions, even a dollar a month over on Patreon can get you that. To all the people who do buy me a coffee or buy me a beer over on PayPal, ah oh man, I just can't tell you. It makes my day when I see those little notifications come through that somebody sent me a little bit of money through PayPal. It just, it makes such an important impact in my life to know that people appreciate the content and what I'm doing. And I truly appreciate all of you. For everybody who subscribes on YouTube, thank you so very much. Don't forget to click that thumbs up to let everybody know that you like the video so that other people can find it. Now let's get into case it. All right, first things first, to get KSNP, you can jump over here to the KSNP GitHub. I'll have this linked in the description. Click on the releases and you'll see they've got a continuous build release. So you can get out there and get that if you want some of the more recent additions. But if you want something a little more stable, you can go grab the version 1.10.1. Um, they've got all kinds of different packages here. So they've got the zip package for Windows. This is a portable package so that if you don't have the ability to install something using the MSI, which I think you need admin privileges, you can use their portable package. Same way with the app image for Linux, you can install this as a portable package, but they also have Deb. If you want to install it on a Debian-based system, you can do that. They've got DMG for Mac, they've got the MSI for Windows, they've got RPMs for Linux, and of course they've got the source if you prefer to build things from source. KSNP is really an awesome project, so definitely get out there and give it a shot. That's how you get, that's how you download it. So let's go back and just check out some of the features of it. It's got some pretty cool stuff. And you can see there's some recent development, two months. I think there's one down here for three weeks for translation. So several things where there's just a couple months back where they've had some, some things where they've uh, merged in new, new build stuff. So if we go out here and look, there's a ton of features. Supports Linux, X11, Plasma, Wayland, Gnome, Wayland, and XDG Desktop Portal, Wayland, Windows, and Mac OS. That's a lot. That's a lot of desktops that it supports. Screenshot of custom rectangular areas. I mean, just so much stuff. And I'm not gonna read all these because there's a ton here. But if you look at supported screenshot types, it'll tell you right here, X11. Basically, they can do almost everything. Um, the window under cursor, uh, it doesn't pick up on that, but it can do the current active window and some other things, which is great. Uh, Wayland with Plasma right now, it's, it's able to get the full screen, the current screen, and the current uh, window under the cursor, so it is able to pick that one up. If you do the GNOME Wayland, it's able to do uh, almost everything, just like the X11, which is pretty great. Windows, almost everything the same way, and Mac OS, almost everything the same way. So they've got quite a bit of capability there, which is awesome. Um, they've got some installation instructions. They've got different ways of installing things for you if you want to install it for apt, Windows, Mac OS. They also have plugin support, which is pretty cool. So there are some plugins out there you can get. They've got OCR and Windows uh, for Windows and Linux anyways, which is pretty interesting also. Um, if there's dependencies, building from source, all the normal instructions you get on GitHub. 
Now, I've talked a lot, so let's go look at what we can actually do with it. So I'm going to open up this video project I'm working on that you guys will be seeing soon. And I'm just going to go here and I'm going to just show you the case snip window or, or menu first. So it's down here in my command bar. I'm going to right click and there's a nice menu of things that you can do. And you can click to actually activate some of these things, but there's also hotkeys that you can do. So this one says Shift R. In this case, I've got it set to Control Shift R. You can change this, but if it just says um, Shift L when you first get it, it's Alt, Shift, and that key. So just be aware of that. I'm not sure why it doesn't show you the whole hotkey combination here, but um, for some reason it doesn't. But you've got the ability to do the rectangular area, grab the, grab the last rectangular area you took a screenshot of, the full screen, the current uh, active window, or the current screen, and then the active window. So I'm just going to do uh, Control Shift R, and I'm going to select an area. And when I do that, the case snip window opens up, and we've got this area that we can work with. Now we've got a lot of tools inside of this window where we can do some markup. So if I was wanting to say, hey, I want somebody to do something about this little button right here that says Configure. You see how it's cut off because I have this pushed over. The button should push over too. So I might want to draw their attention to that button. Now, right here, you've got this rectangular and ellipse tool, so you can select those. Up here, you've got tools to say, do I want that to be just the border or do I want it to be filled in? So I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna say I want a rectangle and I'm gonna draw it and it's red right now. Now I can change that color by clicking here and just pick a different color. And first I need to select it actually. So I'll click on the hand, select it, and I'll pick a different color and it's a different color. So I've just done a nice little call out right here. I can also just grab an arrow and point like right here. And then of course you've got the ability to put text and letters and things like that if you want to. So you've got all kinds of really cool functions and you can also blur things. So if I had something on here and I was like, you know, I need to blur this part out, um, I can just do blur. Or if I just prefer a pixelated look, that's fine. I can do pixelate as well. And you can see it pixelates it. So it's kind of up to you how you do that. but. So it lets you do something where maybe you need to hide a password or a secret key or something like that from the screenshot that you took, but it, it gives you those tools, which is really great. So when I'm done with that, I can either save it, but if I don't want it, I can just do shift and escape. That gets rid of the window for me. Now it's still in memory, so I can still go pull it back up. If I do that by mistake, I can just double click and it comes right back up to where I was. So I can do everything I need to do. Um, when I get ready to quit out of case snip, it's gonna ask me about this thing that I haven't done anything with. So if I haven't saved it, it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna save it? And then you can say, no. I don't want to, or yeah, I do want to, I meant to save that and I didn't. So you get a lot of really good options with it as well for things that you can do. It's really a pretty straightforward tool. It's not hard to use at all, as I showed you. So if I just click, uh, I think here, yeah, it goes, goes away. Now again, I can just do, uh, I've got my hotkey set to Control Shift R, but you can use the Alt Shift R and it'll work just fine. Um, if I do that hotkey, again, I just get this little nice place and it tries to kind of catch what's on the screen so i could say look at this it didn't work right and then of course again i can take this and i can say look right here and i think it's got a highlighter i think this is a highlighter right here so i can say it is highlighting it's just very dark on the screen so it's hard to see because this is in a dark mode view let me take a picture of something that's a little bit lighter and maybe we can see there you can see it better up here that it is doing some highlighting um, let's do something that might have a little bit lighter text. There, we've got a nice uh, bright page here. Let's just do a quick screenshot. And we'll just take this. And now we can use our tool for highlighting. And I can say, this right here needs to be fixed. Or you can actually just change this to say, I just need a rectangular area. And I can pull it like that so it'll fix it. And again, you can change those colors up here just by using the color palette. Pretty easy. And I can close that and I can tell it, no, I don't want to save it. And here, no, I don't want to save it. And finally, this one, no, I don't want to save it. And after doing that, I'm done with KSNP essentially. So I can just bring this toolbar down and close that. And it goes back down into my, into my palette down here where I can access it if I need it. If you're wondering about the license, it is the GNU G General Public License version 3. So it is an open source license. If you haven't tried KSNP, get out there, give it a shot, see what you think. And let me know in the comments what you think about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe. Tell your friends about it so they can come along in the open source journey with us and I'll talk to you next time.